Welcome to VTOP10 and today's video we're ranking the 10 Lucas the Machine Matisse best knockouts. Number 10. Lucas Matisse vs Demarcus Corley. On January 21, 2011, Matisse beat Demarcus Corley by TKO at 102 in round 8 of 12 and 1 vacant WBO Intercontinental Light Welterweight title. Su combate is Chop Chop Corley. Buena ráfaga de puños nuevamente al ataque Lucas Matisse en peso vuelta las demás en 140 libras imagínate la comparándolo con Sab Jura de la edad y la experiencia bien ahí la lastimaba en el patio de su casa ahí en Mendoza oh, oh qué mano derecha y después la izquierda está muy lastimado Chop Chop Corley porque es un peleador que ya con los años encima ahí trabaja bien al plexo solar más maduro desde su derrota en contra del Super Sab Jura qué gancho de izquierda Lucas Matisse que no está quitando el dedo del reglón sigue presionando todo bajo control y es, y es lo más... ¡Ah, oh. mira, qué gancho de... Primero el chino Maidana y ahora... ¡Ay! Oh. Oh, casi se va la lona. Sí. Le do... Como cuando llegas a la iglesia y nomás te doblas poquito y... ¡Ay, <risa> oh, qué combinación! ¡Otra vez! 140. Pero ¿sabes que Ahí es su promotor o el, el manejador de... A, a la ciudad de Mendoza. Y no va a haber problema. Oh, oh, y otra, otra vez, después del castigo que ha recibido en, en la zona hepática. Oh, una una vez más, ¿eh? Estamos ya en el octavo asalto, este combate que está pactado a 12. ¿Cuántas veces oh. ha caído? Yo ya perdí la cuenta. Son ¿Seis veces? Seis. Caridad humana. Por parte del de, de referee de Hernán Guajardo y también Otra de la vez. esquina. O por lo menos no en Estados Unidos, no, no lo hubieran dejado continuar, déjame decirte. ¿eh? Otra vez el gancho a las Chap Chap Coli y no dejen que él siga haciendo esto. Eso fue resbalón. Se fue resbalón. Y ya. Number 9. Lucas Matisse vs. Emmanuel Taylor. On May 6, 2017. Matisse beat Emmanuel Taylor by TKO at 2.21 in round 5 of 10 and 1 vacant WBA Intercontinental and WBO International Welterweight titles. Gold crochet, sağ direk, sağ kimde, sallar gibi oldu ve Matisse'ye yakışırdı. Hiç olmamıştı. Ve şimdi sol kroşe, sağ kroşe ikili. Ne zaman Lucas Matisse sağ kroşesini açıktan gösterse yaşında. Aparkat geliyor. Sadrek şimdi. Taylor o dakikadan itibaren üstün durumda. Ve bir Sadrek. Kroşe geldi tekrar. Bir sağ kroşe daha. Kroşesini. Bir sol kroşe daha. Sol kroşe tekrar. Sadrek. Aparkat Sadrek. Diğer taraftan. Karşılıklı çok sert yumrukta. Sorularını... Gündemde tutuyor ve şimdi öyle bir yumrukta başladı. Enteresan bir yumrukta devam etti ve Emmanuel Taylor kalkamayacak gibi sanki. İyi misin diyor. Kalktı devam ediyor. Emin misin devam etmekte diyor. Hayır. Number 8. Lucas Matisse vs. Lamont Peterson. On May 18, 2013, Matisse beat Lamont Peterson by TKO at 2.14 in round 3 of 12. It takes an aggressive approach against Lucas Matisse. Finished the former world champion, Matisse has been very aggressive in his past few fights and, and he's been successful with that style. But here, boxing takes... 211th pro round for Peterson is in the books. And of boxing. And of course, Peterson with the reach advantage wants to establish that jab, but Matisse able to close the gap. Fight. And now Peterson is now closing the distance himself. This is this is where Matisse wants it. A minute remaining in the second round. Straight right hand there. The jab sticks by Matisse. To keep him at bay with the jab. And there he trips. Said that left hook was a tough one. He was down twice against Victor Ortiz. And once again, Lucas Matisse continuing here as Peterson gets rocked again with that right hand. And there, Matisse slips. As we look at the power punches throughout this fight, it's Matisse with a huge advantage. Yeah, and it's the better chin. <laughs> oh, and down goes Peterson on the counter. Matisse detonated that left hook. And for the second time in the round, third time in the fight, it's been waved off. Number seven. Lucas Matisse vs. Tewa Kiram. On January 27, 2018, 
Matisse beat Tewa Kiram by knockout at 121 in round 8 of 12 and one vacant WBA regular welterweight title. Karan does not have that luxury. It has. And with that right hand he just threw that max, there's no way that could produce him. Combination by Matisse. That the singing in the crowd comes from Argentine sports. But in fact, you're giving up a little bit every day if you train that way. Or deep professional background against top fighters, so he doesn't have... Throwing one punch at a time, not throwing three or four together. One of the hardest punchers in boxing. They wouldn't know it to see this, although there's a left hand that lands, and down goes Kiram. Lucas Matisse hurt Kiram with a left hook. Let's see if he can finish him now and put an end to what has been a dreadful fight. <laughs> oh, Kiram has decided to stand and hold his ground and fire back rather than running and holding. And now Matisse gets him with the right hand. That was not a, was a felon right here. Number 6. Lucas Matisse versus Florencio Castellano. On November 21, 2009, Matisse beat defending WBO Latino interim light welterweight title Florencio Castellano by knockout at 2.04 in round 4 of 10. えっと、2006年にWBO Number 5. Lucas Matisse vs. Roberto Ortiz. On September 6, 2014, Matisse beat defending WBC Silver Light Welterweight title Roberto Ortiz by knockout at 2.45 in round 2 of 10. Take a bathroom break, my friends. <laughs> oh, stance at all. Plus out the ringer. They said we must use the jab. It helps him land power punches in a rather getting to know you round as they right uppercut followed by a straight right in the inside as they exchange at close quarters tries to throw a right behind Matisse's guard as Matisse now goes to work on Ortiz got this weird rhythm this weird even stance you know look even Matisse but Matisse really controlling this round by pushing the go high and just as we said a good body shot oh. Number 4. Lucas Matisse vs. Humberto Soto. On February 10, 2012, Matisse beat defending one WBC Intercontinental Light Welterweight title Humberto Soto by corner stoppage in round 5 of 12. 32 with one no decision. The box early. Now Soto. There's that uppercut by Soto. It's one of his many punches in his arsenal. Matisse has been aggressive, nice lead right hand, connecting for Matisse, using the free hand inside, and the end of round two, whoa! Soto from Mexico, Matisse from Argentina, straight right hand in the midsection, backs up Soto. Now Soto is boxing, he's being a boxer puncher, but when he goes to the ropes there... Matisse, oh, another right hand, straight right hand connecting Matisse, here we go, in LA! Soto snapping the jab. Left hook by Matisse gets through. And then make a fight 12. Oh, Soto stumbling. Oh, that right hand hurt him. Abner, thank you very much for joining us. What do you think thus far? Combinations, but Matisse always comes back with something strong, like that. Left hook. Oh. Looping right hand. Another left hook. Another right hand. Oh. And Soto is hurt. And he goes down. With the right hand! Roberto Soto! Let's stop the fight. Let's stop the fight. We're gonna stop the fight. 
Wait, he's going to stop the fight. I'm going to stop the fight. And they stop it. Lucas Matisse. Number three. Lucas Matisse versus Ios Olusegun. On September 8, 2012, Matisse beat Ios Olusegun by TKO at 2.59 in round 10 of 12 and won vacant WBC interim light welterweight title. Joseph. Not as much. Oh, good. There's that overhand right for pulling himself together in this round. Gets backed up with that oh, right my. and a left hook to the body of Jose. Hands are low. And again through the guard is the right handle. 50 seconds left in another entertaining third round. And Matisse unloading the right hand and a Jose. And also he's moving and to he's his moved, left. Yes, and moving to because he has been to the body. He's also been very good upstairs with that lead left the hook. Master boxer or someone oh, that can hurt him. There he goes. Jose staying busy, but again oh. gets backed up on the ropes. And his career probably never been really hurt. And if you can't hurt him, high off the ropes, the right tactic. Oh, oh and there's a one-two from Matisse. Fights an orthodox fighter. A Jose get along the ropes, and his head gets popped back. Left hook upstairs, working the bodies. Matisse along the ropes. And Case's skills on Showtime. And while it's just for an interim title, oh, and he gets popped. Well, against Matisse, it was a marginal thing. Wow, big left hook by Matisse. Instead of Jose, came back fighting. Good for him. And Matisse unloading on a Jose to the butt. I don't know if I've seen a more entertaining one-sided fight in a long time. It's amazing. Ten seconds left in the tenth round. Matisse. Oh, and fires off the right hand. A Jose's in the corner. A Jose goes down for the first time in his career. And Mora has stopped the fight. Number two, Lucas Matisse versus Mark Dallas Jr. On January 26, 2013, defending WBC interim light welterweight title Matisse beat Mike Dallas Jr. by knockout at 226 in round one of 12. In the fifth round and against a Jose, landed a nice left hook to the head of Dallas Jr. So he's got a, certainly doesn't want any ring rust to affect him early. Good right into the stomach by Matisse. But must be right if you were going to say <laughs> Well, the smart tactics, he wants to keep the fight in the middle of the ring and kind of dead in the action if it's going to be on the ropes. And obviously Matisse wants timing him a little bit. Heading into the final 60 seconds of the first round, Matisse and Dallas. Mike Dallas Jr. to keep his punches above uh, the belt line. Dallas was telling us he wanted to utilize that speed advantage, stick and move. Oh, and count. meanwhile, Matisse! Number 1. Lucas Matisse vs. John Molina Jr. On April 26, 2014, Matisse beat John Molina Jr. by knockout at 0-22 in round 11 of 12 and won vacant WBC Continental America's light welterweight title. Oh, the right hand by Molina. Matisse absorbed it. And now Matisse goes down! Absolutely not. He definitely didn't want to come off to this start. Official after the bell ending round number four. Jab right, jab right. Latusse getting it on here. It's not exactly in a premium with these two. Latusse in the black with light. Blue and to the center of the ring. Molina did. Oh, and down right goes over here, Matisse. Right. A hardcore fan expected this. Matisse down twice in the fight. As he now puts the pressure on Molina as we go to round six. <laughs> Trying to establish the jab. Right over here, right? Being a 10 8 round with the knockdowns for Molina. Yeah, it's amazing. Even if you think yes. it was illegal. Right hand. He's saying Molina. We can hear every thudding blow. And in my keys to victory. John Molina and Lucas Matisse unwilling to give each other an inch as they continue to go toe to toe. Seems to be just a big gas. And Matisse and Molina goes down. Round nine. Draw with the left. Molina, unbelievable. Double left hook by Matisse. Right cross. Unbelievable. This round has been all with Lucas Matisse. Brutal fight. This is what you love to see in the sport of boxing. Double right, left hook. Matisse is indeed the fighting machine tonight, but there's a left hook counter by Molina. Oh, Molina, he 
Adams, another solid left hand. Double left hook, and it's all Matisse. All the fight is Matisse is hurting Molina more. And you wonder how much more? And down on goes Molina. Time in the fight, third time in his career. Matisse's been down twice. A legendary scrap here at the Stump Up Center. They continue. It looks like Lucas Matisse is coming to finish the job. Wow. That look. Oh, it goes down. It seems to be over. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.